Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is your boy, The Crypto Siege, with another day in the life and the crazy life that is a digital asset space. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hope you guys are doing outstanding. I'm shooting this video in the morning, but I'm actually not going to post it probably until the afternoon. Yeah, man, crazy. Get a chance to get two videos in. Why not? Right? Why not? I still will be doing the two streams. So plan on seeing that 3.30 and between 8.30 and 9 tonight as well. Absolutely exciting times, guys. So listen, major shout out to, to Sam I Am to the Lifeboats. He was the first one that I saw reported on this. I am going to talk about this in depth, uh, a little more in depth on the stream this afternoon because I think it is really significant. And it is this article uh, and that Santander apparently sent an article document that Santander, the bank of Santander, Santander sent to, uh, you know, the powers that be in reference to um, sort of this whole new thing with the Dodd-Frank Act uh, that happened in 2008 where they, you know, they wanted this, you know, more transparency and fees and uh, this, the, this type of thing uh, and being able to get that out in the messaging that, you know, clearly what the, the fees are and the messaging and this type of thing. Well, um, Santana was addressing Swift's GPI and how it is not effective. It is not going to solve the challenge that the regulators, if you will, are wanting because the messaging that it, this GPI does, it doesn't provide it early. It provides it afterwards in terms of costs and fees. What I don't understand it from Sam. And so to, to get this major global bank Santander, which is basically saying, you know, look, look, we know that you guys know that there's some fintech companies out there, right? These non-bank companies, they call them, but these fintech companies that can do something, but they don't have the reach in terms of the network, and they're not at scale yet. To, perhaps, to handle volumes like a Santander would handle. Swift has the network and they can handle the volume, but they're not able to provide the things necessary in that GPI that the regulators want. This is Santander acknowledging this. So they understand that there's a FinTech company out there that can provide this, everything that the regulators want. You know, K KYC and AML, transparent fees in the messaging they, it can provide the ripple net can provide everything that the regulators want and Santander knows it but they also know that ripple net is beginning the uh, especially the ODL platform it's in, it's in its infancy and they understand that it can't handle the volumes yet but to, in order to meet what the regulators need they know the Swift GI PPI can't, GPI cannot do it. And so it's just a matter of time before RippleNet will become, if you will, as to, to put it the way Tootie Lifeboat said, the de facto option. It's just a matter of time. 2020 is going to be a great year. And they also know that there's this other non bank money transmitter that is MoneyGram that because they're leveraging the power of RippleNet and its greatest asset, XRP, that they can do the same things that the regulators are wanting to do now. You know, they're using it on a limited basis, MoneyGram is, only 10%, but they're looking to ramp up the corridors as well. So it's just a matter of time. And the banks know this. The banks know that MoneyGram's doing its thing, right? Like I've always said, MoneyGram's use of the ODL at NXRP is, in fact, old money's real money, Wall Street's proof of concept. They understand the business model, and they're paying attention, especially the banking world. They're paying attention. They're listening to the quarter two and quarter three reports just like you and I. They're hearing these buzzwords, these cold words for additional revenue streams because of this RippleNet partnership and the use of XRP. They're listening, they're hearing it loud and clear. 
and they're scrambling. The banks are scrambling. <laughs> you know, to try to figure out a way that how they too can leverage this thing that is the Ripple Net. And the only way, obviously, was to become part of the Ripple Net. And they understand that. But for Santander to acknowledge the shortcomings of the SWIFT GPI is massive. And as I always like to say, if Santander knows, so, the other, so do the other major banks. That's why Bank of America is making the moves that they are making. And if you didn't catch my um, quasi deep dive on that, you got to go check that out in the video. And, uh, where my videos go check that out as well. Bank of America is not resting on their laurels. Bank of America is making moves. They are being proactive. <laughs> they are being proactive. So I love that. So guys, yeah, we're going to cover that in the stream this afternoon. Santander is essentially saying, look, the Swift GPI is not, it's not the answer. It's not the answer. And the people from Ripple, whether they be Brad Garland House on stage, you know, you know, calling, you know, their move, that GPI is basically going from a horse and buggy to an automobile. But he points out, why would you just go to an automobile? Why not build a Ferrari, right? Why not build a Lamborghini, right? And that's what RippleNet is. That's what RippleNet is. And so, interesting article. I can't wait to cover that uh, a little bit more on the stream this afternoon. Santander Banks acknowledging that they, they understand that there's something else out there. They understand that it's a quote unquote closed network, but it can provide the things that the regulators are want, wanting, which is transparency and fees and costs. KYC and AML. And they also know that RippleNet can literally tap right into the SWIFT network without a problem. It just needs to work. You can tap into it. And those 11,000 banks on that network will now be able to meet the requirements of regulators. That's the bottom line. Because they got a debt. There's a deadline for this meeting the requirements, right? I believe it's something about June 2020. So they got to meet it. They got to they up the game. And SWIFT GPI is not the answer. And the, the people in the magnitude of Santander understand that. So guys, that's really, really exciting to know. And it's just cool to understand that we're part of something that's providing the answers to so many problems in the financial payment space. How cool is that, guys? It's really, really cool. So anyway, guys, listen, I'm going to end this video like I do all my videos and tell you to never, ever forget this. That old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in, where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know. That the battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.